This week, repairing the power Fantastic Vent opener. Our coach has tall ceilings and the vents with the fans are way out of reach for Sherry. But this is not a problem with the remote control Fantastic Vent fans. These were installed as original equipment in our coach. Just hit the button and they open or close in just a few seconds. Or at least that's the way they were when they were new. Our coach is now 15 years old and the plastic parts have started to get brittle in places. The vents are one of these places. And some of the parts just don't hold up anymore. This along with the design of the lift arm for the vent will cause the lift arm to fail if the lid is closed too far. Then it just spins the knob and doesn't open. But it's a simple repair that takes about 30 minutes and just requires a long Phillips screwdriver, some slip joint pliers, scissors, a stick, and an aluminum can. And if the lid doesn't need replacing, it can all be done from inside the coach. I start by removing the screen. Ours is held on by eight screws. Once it's out of the way, I remove the two screws that hold the motor unit on and just let it hang by the wires. Then three more screws in the bezel and I can slide it down to access the two screws holding the lift arm in place. With the lift arm loose, I push up on the lid with a stick to angle it and allow the lift arm to slide down the slot on the lid to where it can be removed. The slot in the base that the arm passes through has a wide point that allows the wheel to pass through it. At this point, you could spend $20 for a new lift arm and just install a new one. But I saw that the problem with this one was that the bearing plug that holds the shaft in place pops out when the arm is pushed too far when closing. That plug just pops back into place and it works fine. The only issue then is how to keep it from happening again. Clamping it down with the pliers similar to the way the factory does will only last so long. What I found helps a lot is to add some reinforcement to the plastic that covers this plug on the base. I just used some metal from an aluminum can to make a cover for the bearing plug. This helps the plastic of the base to resist being pushed out of the way by the pressure of the plug. The can cuts easily with scissors and then just fold it over and bend it to match the shape of the lift arm body. If the plastic on the base was more damaged, I'd make this part cover the entire mounting part of the lift arm body, but this should be enough for now. Then it's just a matter of putting it back together. Starting with the lift arm, and this can get tricky for someone like me with bifocals, but with a long screwdriver and patience, it slides back in and the screws go back in place. I used the stick again here to position the lid to allow the lift arm to slide easily into place. Then the bezel slides back into place. I have to be careful not to pinch any wires or get them trapped in the wrong place. That would require taking it apart again. I put the three screws back in the base and then the motor slides back into place. This would be where I would find out if I have any wires in the wrong place as the motor won't fit well or the fan blade won't turn. 
The motor is held in place with two screws. A quick test to make sure all is working as it should, both manually and with the motor. Then the screen is put back with the eight screws and it's done. While I had the screen off, it was also a good time to clean up the fan and the screen with a wet cloth. If you have any questions about RV living or have suggestions for topics for videos, leave a comment below. We do videos every week and we appreciate hearing from you, our viewers, letting us know what you would like to see. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.